In this lesson, I am going to discuss eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices. Suppose that we have a square matrix. The scalar lambda is called an eigenvalue of A if there is a non-zero vector x such that when we multiply A and x, we get lambda times x. We say that this vector x here is an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. I want you to take note that this vector x here must be non-zero. Why is that? If x is equal to the zero vector, a times the zero vector is the zero vector, and this is equal to lambda times the zero vector for any real number lambda. Then if that is the case, it doesn't make sense to talk about eigenvalues because all real numbers would be an eigenvalue. Eigenvectors are always non-zero. However, eigenvalues may be equal to zero. So for example, A is this matrix here, 2, 2, negative 4, 8, and V is 1, 1, and W is 2, 1. Which of these are eigenvectors and what are their eigenvalues? So first, let us check A, V. This is equal to 2 plus 2, which is 4. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. And this is equal to 4 times 1, 1. And 1, 1 is exactly your V. So hence, when we multiply A to V, we got a scalar multiple of V. And that scalar is 4. So therefore... V is an eigenvector of A corresponding to the eigenvalue 4. Let us check AW. This is equal to 2 plus 2, which is 4. Negative 8 plus 8, 0. And this is not a scalar multiple of 2, 1. So therefore, W is not an eigenvector of A. So if we graph this, V is the vector 1, 1. W is the vector 2, 1. When we multiplied A with W, we obtained 4, 0. So that is why this is this vector. Whereas AV is equal to 4, 4. So hence, how do eigenvectors look like? They must be vectors such that when we multiply that vector with A, we will get a scalar multiple of the vector. So that's why they lie on this same line over here. Let us find all eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the identity matrix IN. This means identity matrix of size N. Take note that if x is a vector in Rn, then by definition, the identity times any vector in Rn is just equal to itself. And this is equal to 1 times x. But for you to be an eigenvector, x must not be equal to 0. So therefore, we found out that the eigenvectors are all elements in Rn such that x is not the zero vector. And what would be the eigenvalue? The only eigenvalue is 1. So there, every non-zero vector is an eigenvector of the identity matrix. Suppose that A is a square matrix of size n. Lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if Ax is equal to lambda x for some non-zero x. Remember that for us to have an eigenvector, it has to be non-zero. So this means that lambda x minus ax is equal to the zero vector. When I factor out my x, we have lambda times the identity matrix minus a times x is equal to zero. Hence, this one has a non-trivial solution. But this is a homogeneous system. If a homogeneous system has a non-trivial solution, then that means that that matrix here is not invertible. When is a matrix not invertible, what can we say about its determinant? Its determinant must be equal to zero.
So hence, we have the following definition. If A is an n by n matrix, the characteristic polynomial of A is defined as follows. It's just equal to the determinant of lambda times the identity matrix minus A. Note that when you expand this polynomial, you get this one. This is a polynomial of degree n because A is of size n by n. How do we now find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of our matrix? The eigenvalues of our matrix are just the roots of the characteristic polynomial of A. We have seen that from here. This is your characteristic polynomial and this is saying that PA of lambda is equal to zero, which means that lambda is a root of your characteristic polynomial. How do we now get the eigenvectors? We just solve this homogeneous system lambda minus a x equals zero and of course this one would have non-zero solutions because lambda i minus a is not invertible here are the steps in computing for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors first we form the characteristic equation when i say characteristic equation that is just the characteristic polynomial set to zero Next, we find the real roots of this characteristic equation. This will be the eigenvalues of A. And for each eigenvalue, we find the corresponding eigenvalues by solving this homogeneous system. Let us do this in getting the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix A. Step 1, we will form our characteristic equation. That is the determinant of lambda i minus a this should be equal to zero so we have lambda lambda and then the negative of a negative three negative five negative one this becomes lambda plus one this is just a 2 by 2 matrix, so therefore it's lambda minus 3 times lambda plus 1 minus 5. This is equal to 0. So when we simplify this, we get lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 8 and this factorizes as lambda minus 4 times lambda plus 2. So therefore what are our eigenvalues? We get that lambda equals 4 or lambda is equal to negative 2. We can now get the eigenvectors of this one by solving lambda i minus a x equals 0. So hence, this matrix becomes 4 minus 3 is 1, negative 5, negative 1, 4 plus 1 is 5. This is just a scalar multiple of the first row, so we get that this is 0 x2 is a free variable because we have no pivot at second column and x1 is equal to 5x2 or 5r so therefore the eigenvectors here is of this form 5r r where r is any non-zero real number For the eigenvalue negative 2, this matrix becomes negative 2 minus 3, so that's negative 5, negative 5, negative 1, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. When we transform this to REF, we just get 1, 1, and 0, 0 which means that x2 again is our free variable and x1 is equal to negative r. 
So the eigenvalues corresponding to lambda equals negative 2 would be of this form. Negative r, r, where r again is any non-zero real number. Let us have this 3 by 3 matrix and let us calculate its characteristic polynomial eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So to compute its characteristic polynomial, we have again determinant of lambda i minus a. And that is equal to lambda minus 2, lambda minus 2, lambda plus 2. And then 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 1, negative 3. I will just be using this notation for the determinant. Since I have a row containing 1 non-zero entry, I will be using the cofactor expansion along the first row. So therefore, this is equal to lambda 2 times the determinant of delete this and this. We get lambda minus 2, lambda plus 2, negative 3, 1. And this is equal to lambda minus 2 times the determinant of this matrix is lambda squared minus 4 minus negative 3. So that's plus 3. This is our characteristic polynomial. And therefore, what are the eigenvalues? Our eigenvalues are the roots of this equation. 2, 1, and negative 1. Now we are ready to compute the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues. I already have my lambda minus a for each lambda, 2, 1, and negative 1. We will be solving this homogeneous system. I no longer wrote the column of zeros here. Let us now transform this to its REF. Since we have a non-pivot column here at the third column, x3 is now a free variable. x3 is equal to r from the second row. x2 is equal to x3. And from the first row, x1 is equal to negative 3. x2 plus 4 x1. Since both of x2 and x3 are equal to r, this is just equal to r also. Hence, the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals 2 will be of this form. Our x1 is r, x2 is r, all of them are equal to r. Where again, r is not equal to 0. Similarly, doing this for lambda equals 1, this matrix in its REF is equal to Again, we have a non-pivot column at the third column. x3 is equal to r. x2 is equal to x3 from the second row. And x1 is equal to 0. Therefore, this is of the form 0, r, r. r is a non-zero real number. And lastly, for lambda equals negative 1, this in its REF is equal to x3 again is another free variable. From the second row, x2 is equal to 1 third x3. And from the first row, x1 is equal to 0. So these are the corresponding eigenvectors. Now suppose that A is an n by n matrix. Again, we can only talk about eigenvalues if our matrix is a square matrix. If x is an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda, then any scalar multiple of this vector x is also an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. Why is that? x is an eigenvector of a means that 
AX is equal to lambda X. When I multiply both sides of this equation by the scalar C, note that C times AX is the same as A times CX, right? And this is the same as lambda times CX. So, hence, look at this vector, CX, CX. When we multiply CX to A, we get lambda times the vector CX. So, that proves statement 1. Next, if I have two eigenvectors of A corresponding to lambda, their sum is also an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. Let us prove this. X1 and X2 are eigenvectors of A. So that means AX1 is equal to lambda X1 and AX2 is equal to lambda times X2. They are eigenvectors corresponding to the same eigenvalue lambda. We want to show that when we multiply A with X1 plus X2, we will again get lambda times X1 plus X2. This is equal to AX1 plus AX2, but AX1 is lambda X1 and AX2 is lambda X2. So now we have lambda times X1 plus X2, which is exactly what we want. When we multiply A with X1 plus X2, we get lambda times X1 plus X2. These two statements are saying that if I get an eigenvector corresponding to lambda, it is closed under scalar multiplication and vector addition. And that means that when we collect all the set of eigenvectors of lambda and we add another vector, and that vector is the zero vector, this will now form a subspace. Of Rn. Why do we have to include this one, the zero vector? Because remember that if you are an eigenvector, then you cannot be the zero vector, right? All eigenvectors are non zero. But for you to be a subspace, you have to contain the zero vector. We have just shown that all eigenvectors are closed under scalar multiplication and vector addition. So that means that this is really a subspace of Rn. And we call this subspace the eigenspace of A. And take note now here that look at this one. This is the set of all x such that AX is equal to lambda x. And the zero vector is an element of this one because A times zero is equal to lambda times the zero vector. Let us find the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenspaces of this matrix. First, let us get its characteristic polynomial, the determinant of lambda i minus a. I will start with the diagonal entry. So that's lambda minus 1, lambda minus 1, lambda minus 2, lambda minus 3, and then get all the negatives. Negative 5, 10. Negative 1, 0, 0. Negative 1, 0, 0. This matrix has one row containing exactly one non-zero entry. So I will expand along the first row. We get lambda minus 1 times the determinant of But this matrix over here is a triangular matrix, correct? So therefore, its determinant is just the product of its diagonal entries. So therefore, our eigenvalues are 1, 2, and 3. We can now compute for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 1. We now have 1 times the identity matrix minus A is equal to this matrix. When we transform this to its REF, we get
Since we have two non-pivot columns at the second and fourth column, our x2 and x4 are free variables. So let's say x2 is r and x4 is s. From our second row, we get that x3 is equal to 2x4, but x4 is s. From the first row, x1 is equal to negative 2x4 also. So this is negative 2s. When we collect everything with R and S, we get that this is 0, 1, 0, 0. And then for S, we have negative 2, 0, 2, 1. Therefore, the eigenspace of A corresponding to the eigenvalue 1 is equal to the span of these two vectors. Next, for lambda equals 2, when we form 2 times the identity matrix minus A, we get the following. When we transform this matrix into its REF, we get We have a non-pivot column at the third column. So the third column is a free variable. Let's call that R. From the third row, we get that x4 is equal to 0. From the second row, we get that x2 is equal to 5. x3, which is equal to R. So x2 is equal to 5R. And... From the first row, x1 is equal to 0. So hence, this is r times the vector 0, 5, 1, 0. So hence, the eigenspace corresponding to 2 is equal to the span of 0, 5, 1, 0. Next, let us compute the matrix... 3i minus a. This is when we again transform this into its ref, we get since we have a non pivot column, x4 is a free variable. From the third row, we get that x3 is equal to 0. From the second row, we get that x2 is equal to negative 5x4 or negative 5r. And from the first row, we get that x1 is equal to 0. So therefore, this is r times the vector 0, negative 5, 0, 1. And hence, the eigenspace of a corresponding to the eigenvalue 3 is the span of the vector 0, negative 5, 0, 1. Let us find the eigenvalues of this upper triangular matrix. Again, when we form its characteristic polynomial, determinant of lambda i4 minus a, And since we will again have an upper triangular matrix, this determinant is equal to the product of the diagonal entries. And hence, when we set this to zero, we get that our eigenvalues are just equal to the diagonal entries. So in general, if we have any triangular matrix, whether it be upper or lower triangonal, the eigenvalues of A are simply the entries on the main diagonal of A. Let us find the eigenvalues of the following matrix. For this one, A is a lower triangular matrix, so therefore, its eigenvalues are the diagonal entries, one-half, two-thirds, and negative one-fourth. For this one, this is a diagonal matrix, meaning to say only the diagonal and these have non-zero entries. So this is a special kind of 
triangular matrix. The eigenvalues are now negative 1, 2, 0, negative 4, and 3. What is the relationship between the eigenvalues and the invertibility of a matrix A? We have this theorem. A square matrix is invertible if and only if lambda equals 0 is not an eigenvalue of A. So to prove this theorem, we will prove the equivalent statement of this. So the equivalent statement of this is that A is not invertible if and only if lambda equals 0 is an eigenvalue of A. Let us start with the right-hand side. Lambda is an eigenvalue of A means that Ax is equal to 0 times x for some non-zero vector x. 0 times x is equal to the zero vector. Again, here your x is non-zero vector, which means that Ax equals 0 has a non-trivial solution. But recall that if a homogeneous system has non-trivial solution, that means that the matrix involved is not invertible. Hence, we have proved the theorem. Zero is an eigenvalue of A if and only if A is not invertible, which is equivalent to this one. I will end this lesson with a Cayley-Hamilton theorem. It says that for any square matrix A, P of A is equal to zero, where this polynomial here, P sub A, is its characteristic polynomial. In other words, a matrix satisfies its characteristic equation. Let us verify the Cayley-Hamilton theorem for this matrix. First, let us compute its characteristic polynomial. When we substitute the matrix A for this, we now get a minus 4 times the identity matrix times A plus 2 times the identity matrix. Do not forget that if you are substituting a matrix here, you should multiply the identity matrix with your scalar. Because you cannot have a matrix minus a scalar. It should be matrix minus another matrix. A minus 4i is... Negative 1, 5, 1, negative 5. And A plus 2i, we will add 2 on the diagonals. So that would be 5, 5, 1, 1. When we multiply these two matrices, we have negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Negative 5 plus 5 again is 0. 5 minus 5, 0. And 5 minus 5 is 0. In our next video lesson, we are going to discuss eigenvalues of linear transformations. And we will see that it will be related also to our lesson, eigenvalues of matrices.